I think we are, we are going to have a pretty good topic to talk about here because, of course, one of the biggest things when it comes to raids is, of course, the loadout, the tools that you bring into that encounter, to that that environment, the weapons and whatnot that you're using. And Dan, you talked a little bit about some of the frustrations you've been feeling. There was a slight salty, salty tweet earlier this week that I thought was fantastic. Uh, um, but with I didn't think it was that salty, but maybe it was. I don't oh, know. It was properly seasoned, buddy. Oh, I loved buddy. it. It was oh, a no. delicious tweet. No. But, you, but I, in that moment, I felt your pain. There were times in which I've, I've been sherping people through through raids and whatnot, and I'd notice, you know, maybe one person's having a particular amount of trouble with a specific encounter or a specific side of a room or whatever, so you move them around, and you notice Guardian Down is being heard quite a few times. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you inspect a little bit, and you notice they've got, like, some blue gear on or something. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, maybe let, let's, let, let's, let's take a look at your loadout a little bit, swap some things up, maybe get some stats in some different... Uh, categories and whatnot and i thought with grandmasters coming up that's a really kind of important topic of conversation because of course as bungie has moved destiny 2 further and further into the rpg category loadouts builds have become such a huge thing especially in the void 3.0 world and we've got an expert here in mr bonafide hero on running that kind of content so how do you feel about the overall state of builds and loadouts and whatnot? And what will you be bringing into Grandmasters this coming week? Um, so builds, I feel like, especially with the whole weapon crafting thing that uh, was introduced in the current expansion, Witch Queen, um, I think with, with all the, the brand new perks that have come out, um, new exotics, um, you know, new toys to play with, and obviously new artifact um, mods that we get every single season. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot lot for us to play with. There's a lot for us to play with, and especially with sort of Void 3.0 um, giving us a little bit more diversity than the other two light subclasses currently. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to, lot to play with. Um, running for, for into GMs, um, I'll definitely be taking a Glaive in to give, give it a go straight away. Um, yeah. Glaive uh, suppression build, even though it has been uh, nerfed, is still... Um, sort of s tier two to myself um as a the the sort of style player i, I play as as like a time um so yeah especially with like unstop and just suppressing and weakening enemies with the void 3.0 system um it's 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 gonna be yeah it's gonna be top tier um you know uh and that can that can then go for you know survivability uh for supporting your your teammates and you know, getting in and out of sticky situations uh, will be really good for that. Um, so yeah, that's definitely what I'll sort of run in first go. Um, and I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong or not, the first GM of the season is the first one, the first uh, Nightfall. Keep, right? Yeah, Scarlet Keep. So we had Scarlet Keep yeah. almost a year ago, over a year ago? Over a year ago, we had Scarlet Keep. Um, I think when it was seasonal hunt and I, I never got much of a chance to play around that time. So I wasn't, I don't have too much experience with Scarlet Keep. And then I think the next one after that is one of the new raids that came out with the, uh, with their expansion as well. So, um, I'm going into sort of, um, territory that I, I don't know too well. Um, and you know, where where things are going to pop up you you so you go in especially over the past year where into these gms that you've done so many times you've done so many times for master as well and you know where sort of uh hvts and champions are going to pop up and what can yeah. pop up um yeah. so you, you have that muscle memory going into like different encounters and different rooms um whereas i won't have that for these first two mm -hmm. um so but that's that's what myself um my uh Sherpa partner, partner Haterade, we generally do on a Tuesday. As soon as the GM comes out for that week, we go jump in and we try and figure out the best sort of way possible to get get it through like straight away. Um and now with the node coming out this this season, um, as soon as GMs come out, which is uh really great. Myself, yeah. Haterade and uh Pigeon, who's uh believe in the chat right now, um, will be running the gauntlet and running all six GMs straight away. Um and then as a Wednesday we'll start up Sherpas. Um so yeah, we'll 
sort of figure figure every, everything out the best best sort of way the best sort of loadout and then we'll we'll go from there um we need to definitely make that sort of as accommodating as possible to anyone coming in that you know for varying varying levels of player um and you you just sort of try to make anything work with, with what they've got um right. obviously there's yeah. the ideal but then there's what what we what we have to work with so i'm trying to find that middle ground going forward and I think that that in particular is going to be something really important because while we do have a plethora of mods and whatnot available to us now with gigantic leaps of power and stuff like the elemental well builds and whatnot, not every player has access to those. I have a couple of new light friends and a, in particular a buddy who's you know been big into Destiny for a long time but took quite a few seasons off doesn't have all of the elemental well mods. Because mm -hmm. I'd imagine the big challenge there is going to be finding that middle ground, like you said, uh, between players who are going to hopefully have as many of those mods as possible so they can slap together those builds, especially since it doesn't cost you resources to put mods mm -hmm. on now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bungie. Thank God, yep. But to, to, to find the, the, the middle ground between the players with that kind of stuff and the players who haven't been visiting 801 every single day to get every single mod. Uh, I, I, God bless you, and good luck in trying to uh, get all of that worked out. But you mentioned something that's been, been kind of a, a topic of conversation for a while in terms of builds, the Suppressing Glaive build, which was utterly lol-worthy for the first few weeks of uh, Witch Queen, but, you know, did get that nerf. I think they, uh, what did they do? They, they made it so that you have to actually have 10% of the, uh, the energy to activate Suppressing Glaive now? I uh, believe that's the case, and I believe they've also um, sort of taken down the amount of, correct me if I'm wrong again, someone definitely will correct me, um, but also touched up the amount of damage that yeah, um, right. you, you do while suppressing. Um, mm -hmm. Please, please correct me if I'm, I'm wrong on that. Um, so yeah, and then obviously during day one raid, they disabled it altogether. So <laughs> um, those who know me um, found that I got very upset because I had three different builds on my Titan going into day one raid that was yeah. all predominantly uh, suppressor uh, glade, um, glaive, and I had to start from scratch two days before the yeah we went into the raid. So that's the first oh. time they've done that, though, right? Like in previous raid races, we haven't really had we've had mods disabled, but not really an entire like um suppressing... we've we've had mods disabled because they've ended up not working as per intended mm -hmm. right. they knew what suppressed the glaive was doing so they went into the season knowing that suppressed the glaive that they were going to disable it by the time the raid came around so yeah um that and one other thing um i believe um but yeah they knew what they were doing they knew how powerful it was so uh yeah they they knew that we we weren't allowed to have it Going in, so yeah. You can't have that. You can't take that into exactly. to Rolk's playground. That's it. <laughs> so oh, I would have been kick ass at uh at an exhibition if I had my suppressive glaive build. That would have been made exhibition day one so much easier. Yeah, I just Dan? love stabbing. I just love I just love making hive blind. Mm -hmm. I just I just want to do all the things. I want to stab. I want to make things blind. That's my that's my mantra. And if you're a hunter, be invisible forever. Mm. <laughs> yes. Man after my own heart. So with that particular build, for, for those out there in the audience who, who maybe are unfamiliar with it, what, what's, the, what's the quick rundown on the suppressing glaive build? How exactly did that work and does it work now? Um, so it... What depending on sort of what class you're running, um, and then obviously the mods that you were sort of running, uh, other artifact mods you were running at the same time. So obviously starting off with a suppressor, uh, glaive, uh, moderator on your, uh, on your class item, um, right. and then sort of pairing other sort of ones. There's suppression mastery. There was another one for um, vampirism, um, and you know depending on what perks you had on your glaive. Um, you could either keep with subsistence, keep shooting um, after killing uh, and pairing that then with 
uh, void well mods and, you know, yeah. depending on what sort of mods you were picking up, the sort of well build you had from there, um, you were doing sort of extra damage whilst they were suppressed and gaining volatile rounds from picking up, um, picking up like void. It was a whole team comp sort of deal. Uh, yeah. that you had to sort of work out with a buddy of yours, but, you know, starting with you with the suppressor glaive. And it didn't even stop with just the suppressor glaive. There was there's, there's this void suppressor um, mod as well. So you didn't even need the the the, the glaive to do so. Um, but yeah, imagine the damage where you've got, you know, you're generating void elemental mods and they're going to a font of might or another teammate and you're yep. stopping and unstop with suppressor um, with unstopped glaive and suppressor glaive, and you're weakening them at the same time, and you know you're, you're throwing a void, void, yeah, uh, you know, weakening grenade down as well. There's you know combining all these things, um, yeah, it's it's absolutely killer. So in, it changes changes from person to person, from build to build. There's no sort of one trick pony to it, right? Um, but basically, you you basically you, you, you've got a bowl. You've got ice cream, you've got sprinkles, you've got a cone, you've got a waffle, you're throwing all this on and it just looks freaking beautiful at the end, and that's what you've got. And that's that's kind of the beautiful thing about it, you know? And that's the beautiful thing kind of about Void 3.0, you know? we it, it gives us the opportunity to create massively powerful builds like this that can get even better when you coordinate them with your teammates. And um, that's something that I was seeing a lot of over the, the first couple of weeks, and it's certainly something I'm going to be seeing a lot of in Grandmasters moving forward. Would you say that that's your, your, your favorite build thus far? Um, thus far, um, yeah, definitely. Um, and, yeah, comparing that with, you know, well well builds, I've got a buddy who has a well mine build um, that goes off sort of solar, so he sort yeah. of outdoes me with, with the well mine build, and that's uh, you know, obviously... Uh, pairing uh war mine mods with wells and you know having your his buddies sort of generating uh wells for him um so that goes that goes really well but uh yeah mine's mine's definitely been playing around with all the void uh mods and then yeah pairing pairing that with the activity in the encounter you're you're running so one encounter you can be running that and then the next encounter you can be jumping back to charge of light it all yeah all depends on yeah it's so it's so versatile it's so uh you know, it's, it's, it's great. No, absolutely. I 100% agree. And like this season, I've actually been running with so many different builds that for the first time, I finally started using the fantastic loadout feature on Dim. I mm -hmm. had never used it before this season, but there's just so many different things to run. I have like three or four different builds that I run on Warlock, three that I run on Hunter, and two that I run on Titan, because I just play PvP on Titan. And uh, it, it, it really made me kind of take a step back and say, wow, this is really cool. I love that we have this kind of creativity in, in builds now. I do wish Bungie would just incorporate a loadout feature into the game, oh, though. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, but that, Go ahead. I will say, so recently... There was a Stream Deck tool built mm -hmm. for uh, Destiny Item Manager. It was being real fickle with me for a while there, but I finally got it. I finally got it to work. And now at, at my fingertips, I can turn on farming mode. I can turn on, I can randomize my loadout and everything like that. So if you, if you're a content creator or like somebody who's just like, I like really cool toys and I got a Stream Deck. You can use Dib with it now. It's pretty sick. Yeah, and I'd absolutely recommend that everybody playing the game go and, and try out the Dim loadout feature. It's yeah. very easy to set up. You just put on what you want your build to be. They have a little loadout tab. You go to it. You save the build. You have to be in orbit in order to, uh, to uh, you know, apply and unapply the builds that you're swapping to and from. But it is very, very helpful, and I really hope that Bungie looks at adding that kind of feature to the game in some kind of quality of life update. Uh, maybe with, with whatever the next big expansion is, Lightfall or whatever. That's, uh, but with, with, as, as we move on into stuff like Solar 3.0 and Arc 3.0, which we know are coming down the line, I think we're even supposed to be getting the next Light subclass revamp next season, right? Yeah. Yeah. In like, what, three weeks? 
Oh, <laughs> uh, hasn't God. it been about is it three? Has, okay, no, no, we've got we, no, it's we've got another weeks, month. Right? We got yeah, fifty days, weeks. man. Yeah, it's, I'm looking it's, at it's, it right now. We've got we've got more time than that because it started yeah. in, in with with Witch Queen. I was get a little ahead of myself. Yeah, man. Comics, <laughs> the concept of an arc in Solar 3.0 excites me. I don't know which one we're getting next, but I'm I'm oh, a little it, I'm a little excited about it. It arc is the one that I'm scared about. Why is that? Uh, flashbacks of Arc Strider Hunters. Oh, you got nothing to fear, man. Come on, you'll be fine. Uh-huh. You're, uh-huh. you're fine. You're fine. It's not like um, Bungie just had to. Uh, disable uh an arc an arc hunter exotic because it was giving you five times normal damage on everything <laughs> that's no it's fine that's fine you're good totally fine 